I am running late. I Hoshua is Rabbi Hoshua is on his way, and I'm packing up my gear because I'm going to be doing a video on Mount Zion. And um, I'm hoping and praying I haven't forgotten anything. Um, this is a very special day. After 30 years of living in Israel, we're going to do a video and impart some information to you on um, some of the greatest historical, archaeological uh, findings to date. And it's all concerning the Hebrew Israelites. I gotta go. Um, Meet me there. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Malaya. I have a very special video presentation for you today. I'm here with my brother and longtime friend, Rabbi Hoshua Amariel. We are in the archaeological site of Tel Arad, which is right outside of the city of Arad in the Negev or southern area of Israel. And the information that we wanted to impart to you today is very, very critical for your knowledge and understanding and um, what is taking place here in Israel today and the historical significance of this particular place. Okay, so we're going to just just jump right on in. Uh, Rabbi uh, uh, Hoshua Mariel has done extensive work historically, archaeologically here, and he's just going to share some of that information with us today. Uh, I did the video on the four blood moons and there was a comment that was made by some um, of the Jewish people and they stated that uh, after this particular series of the four blood moons that they were hoping that it would indicate the rebuilding of the temple. So that led me here to uh, the rabbi for him to give us a, a better clarity and understanding of uh, not only Mount Zion but the rebuilding of the temple. Okay, so um, your bio is so lengthy and extensive, I almost don't know where to start. Okay, but your family has a long, long legacy as, as far as civil rights, as far as the Back to Africa movement, the Pan-African movement. Uh, you've done extensive work in other countries doing research here in Israel. And um, I like to refer to you as the Hebrew Israelite Indiana Jones. So um, even here, you know, you have had a major impact in um, interpreting the ancient Hebrew script. Is that, is that correct? Yes, actually, that's one of the things that actually got me in this complex right here to see as I'm telling my story. Uh, I was uh, in the year 2000, uh, uh, when the Dead Sea Scrolls were released, I was at the conference in Chicago. And when I showed up at the conference, uh, and they released the Dead Sea Scrolls, and they were talking about the ancient Hebrew, I started to show the people uh, my book and my actual translation. And they were amazed, and they asked me, how did you translate this? And I was told, I, I went off into the history of the uh, Indians and the Cherokees and the Hebrew connection, which is one of the things to us, uh, uh, subjects that uh, we said we was gonna discuss uh, last time that uh, we, uh, I was on your show, the first uh, show we had, we was gonna be discussing that later. But uh, this specific subject is, uh, is, is very hot in the community, so we're jumping ahead past that to this. Uh, I, I was, uh, I was in, uh, in that conference, I met certain archaeologists and certain uh, translators. And when I came here, uh, the, the archaeologists, uh, when I first found Tel Aviv, the archaeologist here, he uh, checked in with them, and they was like, yeah, this guy here, he's like a, a, a translator into Hebrew. So they, they invited me here, and uh, this is how I became up with the watchman here. But as you were speaking about my family, yes, my family goes back uh, 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 Martin R. Delaney, uh, which was uh, 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 one of the, uh, he was a chief, and he was not a slave, and he was one of the people that was traveling through 
uh, Africa and in the Middle East in search of black Israel mm -hmm. uh, in, in 1837. And, uh, and then you move on to my family, uh, one of the uh, next uh, most important people was John Robinson uh, and also uh, 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 Arnold Ford, Rabbi Arnold Ford. He was the individual that actually uh, went into Ethiopia on my, on my great-great-grandmother's side of the family. He was the individual that had actually went into Ethiopia and had established a rabbinical order in America. You know, uh, Rabbi Matthews was anointed by him. Very few people know that, mm -hmm. you see, and he so he was able to get uh, uh, he so he was the one that actually started the rabbinical board, and from from him uh, later uh, uh, one of my relatives came, which was very well known, more known than him in the public, which was John Robinson, and he was like one of, he was the he, he was the one that the individual that actually trained the Tuskegee Airmen. <laughs> you my see. goodness, you see, so uh, you know, and he was uh, he was a Chicago hero. He got a uh, hero's welcome in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I actually have an ancient uh, Ethiopian Bible that he brought back from Ethiopia that he was given to his lassie because he helped to start the Ethiopian Airlines. Uh, so uh, later we'll be able to show you all that in a nut in an interview within itself. And I, be also have, I believe you have a cut on that when we was talking to the, uh, to the, the Jewish agency uh, in reference to showing them the information and various different uh, artifacts you know, that our people have here in Israel. But here, like you just said, uh, I, I, in my uh, I, in my archaeological area, I just I just want to point this out to my sons and my me. I just want to jump in there for a second before I get to your own. This is we're talking about the family. Since we're talking about my family, my sons and me, we just uh, you got this award here. We just walked down from Tel Aviv here to Masada, and we got this award. A couple of medals here, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm very proud of myself and them for doing this walk. This supposed to simul simulate uh, the walk of our people when they left here mm -hmm. during the time of the kings. Also, but more importantly here, uh, the, uh, is the Jewish walk to the Masada. Now, the word Masada just simply means fort. Okay. You see, but uh, but we know this, and through our research, we've been able to identify that actually as the Mount or the place of Jericho. Mm -hmm. You see, so this so this is this is the significance of that place in this place. But uh, uh, so, but uh, right now. Uh, then you pick up and you brought up uh, the blood moons. Uh, Basada or the name Jericho itself means moon. Are you serious? Yes. And, uh, and, 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 and the only place in the land of Israel, see most people, most people are aware that names mean things. And when, you, and when you go to Masada, the only place that you can actually see or have seen uh, moons before uh, and, and to the intensity where they where, where where they periodically might turn yellow if not red is before Masada, you see, and mm -hmm. that place or we, we refer to as Moon or Jericho. It's referred to Jericho, you see, and that that and that specific uh, 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 occurrence that happens there quite often is re is the reason why that place is named Jericho. But once we, so we're going to do some videos with some people there to connect that place, the actual ancient Jericho, with this place and how that was in the vicinity within the land of Benjamin and in the vicinity of the house of God. And as you just pointed out right now, let me just get uh, talking about, uh, but what I want to bring up also was one of my, uh, I've just been listed, uh, as, as you pointed out, as far as my work, as far as research work, I've been listed among the explorer rabbis. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and also, just recently, I was just listed among uh, uh, the, uh, the best activists. I'm, I'm just put on the best activist list of all times. Mm -hmm. You see, so that's where my activist work came in. And my activist work actually led me into my research work or my search for Mount Zion here. And, uh, and uh, this was a part of what happened here with our people here. Uh, back during the time of what we call the siege, when the state of Israel was established, many Jews came to Israel here. But when it came down to the black Jews, it says black Hebrews scorned an Israeli homeland. You see, so when our people first came here, we wasn't truly recognized here as, as the children or Hebrew Israelites, or as, as this term says, black Jews. So what ends up happening is that because of that, many of our people were arrested. You see here, and this is a list of the people that were arrested. You can see Prince Keskiahu's. Uh, mother's name is here, Zai Absalom, and so as you see Absalom here. You see, so many of the people here that uh, that we know today here in Israel was on uh, uh, various different family. Uh, uh, one of my cousins here was uh, uh, was was also arrested here. 
Uh, and, uh, and this is one of the reasons why I, I became involved, my family became involved in, in, uh, in trying to get his release along with others. And as a result of that, I was able to show the artifacts, uh, the similar artif the artifacts that in the Jewish agency uh, video that, uh, that we took with uh, Ananiel, I believe his name was. He have a video, but you also got a, a piece of the cut of it uh, about how when I, we were showing the artifacts to the Jewish agency here, how I showed them the ancient Hebrew relics. Uh, which at the time it was called an ancient Cherokee, and I showed them various different artifacts that substantiate that our people were the actual children of Israel. And after that, here we go, Israelite, uh, Israeli sept groups from Chicago. Many people don't know that I was a part of, and me actually verifying uh, and, and showing the, the various different rabbis here in Israel our uh, actual proof that connect us to the children of Israel, which in America it was called an ancient Cherokee. Uh, was, uh, was one of the primary tools, not only, but one of the primary tools that allowed our people to be able to stay here in Israel. And we were, the, and we were here before the Ethiopian Jews, which very few people are aware of, you see. But because we have been roaming around the wilderness for 40 years, you find me, very few of us have actually obtained anything just here a, in the just land. Just a minute, just a minute. Here in the, this is also talking about the same subject, how Israel... Airlift, you know, one, you know, uh, thirty-five million dollar fee to airlift Ethiopian Jews. All of this here, and that's just occurred in in uh, in, in 1991, as you can see from this two newspaper article. You see, so all of this is a part of, of of so because we were the first blacks that actually entered into Israel. Uh, you know, that became an issue here, uh, and then you can see ex Chicago and find no welcome in Israel. You see, so. Uh, so as a result of that, you know, this is the black community here that in, in America, 2000. So finally, when I did come up into Israel, of course, you can see me here on the front page of Chicago, uh, a newspaper here. Uh, I was uh, also the, the guy in our generation that started the reparations, uh, the reparations movement right here. This is the picture for, for the right here. You see, it's time to go home with our reparations, you see. So that was, I was there with Dorothy Tillman, you see, uh, you can see Hoshua Maui here, there, listing my name there and calling people to come home. This is also new, another newspaper article here, you see, that has me listed here. Uh, you see Hoshua Amari there, there, you know, and talk calling in the calls. This is, so there was a major issue, and this all happened before I came. This, this happened before I came to Israel, uh, dealing with the reparation struggle, looking for our, uh, looking for our people a homeland. But when I, so actually when I came up to Israel, uh, uh, what led me here, if I might, if I, if I might say, is, uh, is actually a, a, a newspaper article, and this is this newspaper article here, and this is the actual newspaper article after searching for Mount Zion, and the search started when I first came up to Israel uh, in, uh, in the year 2000, uh, probably in, in, in 1987. Uh, when I during the time of the siege, and that's where actually when I when we started actually looking for Tel Aviv, and what happened here is that this is an artifact that was found uh, here in Israel, and the beautiful thing about this artifact is that it was it it actually mentions Bet Yehoah, the house of Jehovah, on here. Mm -hmm. You see, and here it makes the statement in the article you're reading here, making donations. You know, to the temple, it happens to be uh, 2,000 years ago, and it said here the upkeep of Solomon's temple is the oldest known mention of the first temple outside of Jerusalem. You see, so this artifact here that they found here led me when I went to when I started to try to do a little bit more research on it. You see, I, I pulled up because uh, uh, the internet just came out at that time. I was able to identify it here. You know, and uh, you know, and it makes the statement here. You know, House of Yahweh. You know, artifact here, and that, of course, led me. I started looking a little bit more, and this was the actual translation of the artifact. And this name here is very important. The name here on here is very important because this is the name of the of the individual that later was found here at Tel Aviv. You see, mm -hmm. so this key. And, we, and so this name here on this artifact that mentions the house of Yahweh was, was also, you know, as I researched and I tried to find out exactly where this artifact was found, it said here, and you can see this is the same, it said here from where? Zoom in that, it says from Arad, you see. So that's the key, you see, so, so I, I, I was able to trace the actual 
writing because of, uh, you can see everybody can, can just leave people. everything down so I can you know okay beautiful so everybody can see the actual this so this is the actual artifact that led mm -hmm. me here you see so after I, after I traveled to Syria Jordan Egypt and Lebanon and, uh, and 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 I finally was able to find the actual place in which we believe to be Mount Zion uh, not by any um, maps or any uh, so-called, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, maps that they had, but although I do have uh, uh, actual maps, uh, the old maps, but the key thing that led us here was the archaeology. Okay. You see, now, but then here, this is another artifact was also located here, and, and it mentions the name of the individual, the father of the individual of this artifact. You see, so we have this artifact, it's mentioned the father, and then here, here we have another artifact, which is the priest, and that priest is, Ele that priest is Eliphaz. Now, if we understand the significance of Eliphaz, Eliphaz was clearly one of the priests during the time of Ezra that was mm -hmm. at the house of Yahweh. You okay. see, so now, now they're here in Hebrew. Now, those that read, because most people don't read actual ancient Hebrew, but you can see here if you can zoom in there. I have a circle the red line where it says Bet Yahoa. See if you I see. can get in here. You see. You see. So. Okay. You see. So that. So that there. You follow me. And so. So this is. This is actual. You know, archaeological evidence that had actually referred to this place here as the house of Jehovah. This is why, again, when you go, when you start looking on the internet and you start Googling this, you will actually see that they, not me, you see, have proclaimed this as being the only house of Jehovah that has been found in the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. You see, so now at that point, it becomes a question of, well, you know, how far does it go and exactly where? So now this here is other artifacts here. This is the story. Then I went in the, the story to try to understand Tel Aviv. And it makes a statement here. It says the outstanding discovery at Arad was the temple with, with a temple which would uh, the northern the northern uh, the north the northeast corner of the Israelite is the Israelite sanctuary. Now Zion's supposed to have been according to scripture in the side of the north, and it said is the first Israelite sanctuary to be discovered in excavation. So now we have a we have we so now this is this specific now this is research that I did before I came here. After I saw this article, I went to try to start digging out information on the actual site, and I came across this. And then here again, we have an, another artifact here. You see, what I'm saying this is the artifact that's now the whole artifact that I made mention of when I when I actually uh, this was the first artifact. This was the second. They just mentioned, it, but this is the whole piece here. And this also mentions Bet Yehovah on here, or House of, or House of Jehovah. You follow me? And, and, it, and it specifically uh, makes a statement here. It says, one well-known example is the Temple of the Rod, which is the contemporary, or which is the same, which, 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 was, which was at the same time as the Jerusalem Temple. You see, so now they, they, they're going to say here that this Temple of the Rod existed within the same time period of the Jerusalem temple. Mm -hmm. You see, so, so because of that, because of that, then it became an issue of whether or not, so if this temple existed at the same time, now if you know anything about the scriptures, and most of us do, you only had one house of the Most High <laughs> in the land of Israel. You see. So, 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 you know, so, it, so it's not, it's not, it was, so it says here, this is another piece, and this is all information that I got before I came here. It said today, one Israelite temple is known in contemporary Solomon Temple. It says here, the excavated temple at Arad. And it says here, and this is the key word here. It says, an Israelite temple in the full meaning of the word, house of Yahweh. You mm -hmm. see? So now, I'm getting, so imagine now, after I found this other fact, how I'm getting all of this you know, it's, 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 it's like I started pulling on things and something just started unraveling, mm -hmm. you see. And, and I tried to understand exactly what was happening here and, and, and what, what really, really, uh, once I, uh, this, is, now this is the walls here that surround the area. And I came across this. And what, if you notice this here, you know, mm -hmm. you, you see the walls, but they don't actually mention in this specific book, because all these different books, they don't mention here the actual temple. Did you mention the name of your book? 
Well, uh, yeah, actually, uh, I have a, uh, my, my book is the Hebrew Phoenician History called, called the Bible. You can Google it. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have an actual, uh, you know, uh, anything with it, but you can Google mm -hmm. it. And uh, it's, it's a, I'm the first person in history to translate the ancient Hebrew. But that's another subject. The point now is that what ends up happening was that, is that, is that, is that I saw this article, as you see, and they list no walls. And then I see this article again here. And they list, you know, they, they list the walls, but they don't list the actual, the actual place. So now when I came here, when I actually came here, I saw something very significant. You see the same photograph here. Now notice this here. You see the same photograph here. You see the, the walls here, you see? This lower city here, you see that, huh? But when you get to this point here, you don't see nothing at all. They had actually took out, in this book, the actual temple. The actual tabernacle of David, or the actual fort. Mm -hmm. So the only way that you could have actually put the pieces together at that time to know is the actual cover. And now look at this. This is another book. The same, but they again left out the fort. You see. Pointed out once more. You see, you see, the fort should, should be right here. This is the same picture here. See, you got the lower city here. So these are actually two books that they had actually hid. Okay, so this is the air. This is the area here right, where, where the, the where walls the should, should have be. been, and on this map, it's where it's here. You see, you see the lower. No, city no, here? put your finger on this one. I'm so putting my finger on this one, and this one should be here, but there's nothing. Oh, there. okay. So wait a minute. So this right here. This fort. Okay. Should be. You see that little square box? Mm -hmm. There should be a little square box here too. Okay. But you don't see it there. You, you, you see that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you flip over, there's another article, which is a little bit bigger, the same. You mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. But it's not there. You see? Okay, so now, well, I wasn't aware of this fact until I actually came here. You mm -hmm. see? So these are just little things that let me know that, there, that something's being, you know, that they, that they, there's certain people that actually didn't want people to know about this actual site, that, that, that there was an actual Israelite temple actually found here. So it ends up happening either way. So I, I come here to Israel, and as a result of that, when I first arrived here, because the archaeologist was, was so impressed with, with uh, when, I, when, I, when I first came here, uh, the archaeologist, uh, I, I, I informed him of my research, and he said, wow. He said, so uh, then he uh, had heard about me and uh, from some people uh, that was here before, so he, I became, at that point, I became the watchman. You see, I became mm -hmm. the watchman here. And this is where, this is when we started teaching from here, ancient Hebrew, you see. And we started teaching ancient Hebrew here. And, uh, and also we started, we invited uh, people, we started inviting people here actually to come and pray. And we started inviting more people to actually come up and, uh, and actually start keeping the holy days here. And, but this is a newspaper article there that we put out in the right newspaper. You see, and you can mm -hmm. see that in yellow there, and uh, and it makes a statement here. And you can see the term that we that we use there. Uh, it's, it, uh, it says, "Learn and read the Torah from the watchman in the ancient city, uh, in the ancient in the ancient Hebrew script." On Fridays, we was having a class. You said at Tel Aviv. Okay. You see? So, well, well, Hoshua. So, um. so where you at right now? Where you, the, the, exactly where you're at right now is where we were hosting those classes. So this is why we're sitting in this specific area here now, because this is the place that we was actually hosting the class and teaching people mm -hmm. uh, ancient Hebrew. Okay. Now this here is, uh, now you want to say something. Okay, so you're doing, this, uh, this is why you are actually named one of the uh, world's greatest uh, social activists because of all of your work. Not only are you working with the Sudanese, you know, you're working, um, you're working on so many levels with so many different people. But my um, specific purpose today is to try to give more clarity and um, historical clarity that is on the four blood moons and th this particular place because of the fact that there are certain Jewish people that are stating after this series of the four blood moons, they're hoping to 
for uh, them to be for the uh, the Jews to be able to rebuild the temple, because uh, in my previous videos it was stated that whenever there is a series of four consecutive blood moons that fall on the high holy days of the uh, the Jewish holy days. These are special, very, very special. This is the fourth time within the last 500 years that this event has happened and it's always indicated a calamity and victory for Israel. So we are expecting here in Israel some type of tribulation and victory. And the Jews are hoping that the victory will be the rebuilding of the temple. What is your opinion on that? Okay, well, uh, the fact that... Uh when you start talking about what, what, what these people recently talk about, the, the blood moons, if you go up on MySpace, you'll see that uh, some years ago, uh, when we first put forth the, uh, this proposal here, when we first claimed the land of Israel uh, in the Jubilee year, uh, and that, at that point, in the, in the first few, we saw a blood moon. You mm -hmm. see, so and when you start dealing with what they call the history of these blood moons, then it goes back uh, as far as uh, during the time of Christopher Columbus, which is very interesting when he discovered America. And you, and you see that that's the time that our people and when I say our people, I mean my people in America, because I'm from the tribe of Ephraim. And that's when we became enslaved. See, prior to Columbus coming to the Americas, we were at that time the only free Hebrew Israelites that existed up until the time of Columbus. We had a society and we had a culture that, that we were actually still reading and writing in ancient Hebrew. Okay, you so see, is that part of the Olmec civilization? This is exactly the Olmec civilization, you follow me? And, and mm -hmm. so this is, you hit the nail right on the head. And what's happened is that the later, when they came over, uh, they, they started intermingling uh, from, uh, because they had a, a decree, uh, a lot of Jews came in, and, uh, and, uh, and you can actually go to New Mexico and you can actually see uh, actual black Indians. Yes. Because most Indians, they will tell you that when you make the holy call, they would say that Indians don't do that. If, mm -hmm. you, if, you, meet, if you meet like a, another tribe, they would say, well, our tribes don't do it. So that, it came down to the point where they thought that that was a myth. You find me which Indians actually came out and did this. But you can actually look at the black Indians in New Mexico in uh, Calcaxia. Mm -hmm. And I was there, I have a video there. And you can actually see one of the Indians doing like this and, and, and performing the holy call. So, but you know, getting to the point there, so, so at that time, that's when our people actually had entered uh, into, into slavery, and, uh, and, and there was an eclipse during that period of time, and they brought the first of our people from America into England, into the Europe. The first slaves that, that came uh, that was a part of the slave trade didn't come out of Africa. They actually were Indians that was carried from America into Europe. <laughs> Very few people know that. You follow what I'm saying? This is fascinating. And when you get down to the whole concept of the first blacks that were slaves in, in America, they, it, it wasn't the slaves of uh, Africans or brother, the, the tribe of Judah that came from Africa. It was actually the slaves, the enslaving of the tribes of Ephraims that was actually already in America. But, uh, but that, let's, get, let's get back to the, the, the in depth of what you was talking about. What's happening with the temple and the connection with the temple is that our people then, when we first came over, and this is what I was showing you here now, in the 1960s is when our people first came in 1967. And at that point, there was another blood moon. There was another blood moon. <laughs> you see. Okay, so uh, just to back up a little bit, 1492, there was supposed to be the Jewish expulsion of the uh, uh the expulsion of the Jews from Spain. Exactly, but but what but, but people are not saying is that in 1492, when those Jews were were expelled from France, from 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 Spain, which my great great grandmother was one of them, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh and and uh, and uh, and she traced her heritage back through there. She married uh, my my grand her name was Ola uh, Nara, and uh, and uh, and uh, and she married the chief. And what ended up happening? was that uh, they became a part of what you just said was the OMAC people, which later became the Cherokee Nation, mm -hmm. you see. So that's where the, you know, so, so this is where the, 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 now they just started recently, my people have been saying this for, the, for years, that Cherokee actually, the Cherokees actually originated in Mexico or in South America, you see, because most, of, most but, we, but we migrated up into North America. You see, so it's so so uh, so it, so that's that was so that just they they just uh, uncover that 
uh, that archaeological evidence in America uh, just, just within the last three or four years. So there's a lot of information, like you said, that as we start, as, as things start being unfold, uh, unfolding, there's a lot of information that's, that's, that's actually coming to light here okay. within the land of Israel. But as you brought up, when, when uh, now, see, now we're dealing with the area of our people being turned into the land this, last, this next blood moon, as you just pointed out. And we're dealing with our people that have returned to the land of Israel. And now at this time, which was in the night, which is 1967, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and that's when our people return. You see, your people, they, uh, everyone else is looking at the significance of the blood moon from their perspective. This yes. is from our perspective. And okay. now something that even more is, uh, I think, is very interesting. Because if, if, you, if you've been uh, studying me, you understand, if, if people know me, uh, my, my family came out with one of the uh, ancient Hebrew calendars. Uh, because my forefathers were a part of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what we call the, uh, the, 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 uh, the holy fire. We were the keepers of the fire, the keepers of time among the tribe. And so when it came down to understanding the jubilee years and it came down to understanding the, uh, the new moons, this is what we did to keep track with time. So what ended up happening is that when our people, became, when our people first uh, came, returned to Israel, then they wasn't very well familiar with the calendar and how the holy days fell. This specific holy day that's coming up now. Mm -hmm. is Which is on the 15th of uh, April. Exactly. Now, this specific holy day, usually, most of the time, and this, is, this is happened, it does happen, but it's very interesting to me that most of the time we don't usually keep the holy days at, on the same days as the Jewish. Most of the time, we would keep the Holy Days one day after the Jewish. Because the Jewish keep what they call the Molab. They keep the black moon. You see, they keep the black moon. They usually count, start counting the, on the black moon when there's no moon. Mm -hmm. You see, so that usually pushes them uh, a, a, ahead of us one day. You see, but what happened this specific year, on the day that they thought it was going to be a black moon, a crescent moon, came up and that just happened recently happened that was just yesterday or day before yesterday yes because you called me so that i could film that exactly okay you isn't see, there something in the scriptures that talks about the the dark moons that they uh subscribe to and, yeah, well, and that it, is not it, particularly how yahuwah wanted that to be observed well there's a lot of reasons why they do what they do you mm -hmm. follow me and I'm, i don't want to criticize what they do you follow me because that's not really my concern you no I'm, it's not my, a criticism it was just a um, question yeah yeah my concern is basically what we supposed to be doing you see and the Torah tells us clearly in the book of Enoch you follow me that says no that we're supposed to have new moon festivals new moon feasts and we and, and how to identify a new moon by the light first coming upon it you see now they took this uh, in, in some forms of uh, to see the moon in their rabbis they came to the conclusion that by the by it being an object uh, uh, on that moon, that that might go off into moon worshiping. And they don't want it, uh, the people to be led into moon worshiping, which in, 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 in Israel, it did lead off into moon worshiping. And going back to Jericho, uh, Jericho, when, uh, when, when my father Joshua of the house of Ephraim, when they first destroyed Jericho, he put a curse on the people that set up, that set up, in English it says, that's, uh, that, that rebuild Jericho. But in Hebrew, it says that set up, that build uh, a, 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 a sanctuary there in the first degree or in the first position to, to worship the moon in the first position. So Jericho actually was a place that the people before we came in used to worship that moon that used to come up or the first crescent moon that used to come up and they used to worship the full moon right there at Jericho. That's why it's called moon. You see, but getting back to what we were saying in reference to our people is that the whole concept of this so-called red moons is uh, because they had set their calendar in believing that it would be a black moon and it ended up being a crescent moon. We, this year, are going to be keeping the Passover at the same time, which is on, going to be on the day of the blood moons, which is very significant. And I'm, and I'm saying that to say, for the first time, in history, since our people have left the land of Israel, there are people that are arriving up from Egypt and America right now in order to keep Passover here at Tel Aviv 
the actual Mount Zion in a, in, a, in a way that we had actually never done before. So this is so this so this so this is so this is the in, in my opinion uh, the true significance of what we of, of what we see now of what of what was just said now to be these these blood moons. Now since we're talking about the holy days, this here again is a. Uh, that, that newspaper article. This is uh, this is information here of about the holy days. And we had the Sudanese that they came up here, you know, to, to and they actually uh, came up here during the Jubilee year, and it was and it was their desire to come up here and keep the holy days in Zion, you see. And uh, they had saw this. Uh, someone had pointed out this newspaper article uh, to, to me here in Israel here when I was here of uh, uh, the connection between the the, uh, this was uh, in the Jerusalem Post in 2005, and this was a newspaper article that came out and uh, speaking about me and our connection to the Cherokee Indians and the, the, the actual true children of Israel that made uh, the Jerusalem Post uh, newspaper there. So it's here, so, so, so the point here is that you had, uh, uh, as I pointed out here when I came here to Tel Aviv, I became, uh, 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 the, this when I became the watchman here. And then uh, uh, this is, uh, and I started working with the archaeologists, and we okay. started pointing people to Zion. Uh, this is the uh, other volunteers that came up, and this is, like I said, when we was teaching the classes. But the most, this is uh, the ancient Hebrew that we were teaching here. You see, and uh, and uh, and uh, this here is the. Uh, now this here is, is when we actually started calling people to keep the holy days here. You see. We call it up, and, 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 and you can see here, this is one Passover. That's used because this is first used to say Passover. It says here, to the brothers and sisters throughout the land of, it, of Israel, from Bathsheba even to Dan. It says, we invite you to celebrate Passover unto, we got, you see the ancient Hebrew name there. Mm -hmm. You said it's of Israel at the house of Jehovah, you follow me? Uh, for this has not been done in a long time. Uh, such a long time, and, 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 and uh, as it has been written, and this is the scripture in Second Chronicles 30 that that gets that, that has that spirit. And, and but look at the date of that. You see, that's 2002. You see, so you know, so so this so this is how long we have been actually calling our people to come here and keep the holy days. And the first for the first time in history, this year. At this time, we've actually got people sending money up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay, so coming here <laughs> to keep and the, making to keep the and making the pilgrimage, or living here or making the pilgrimage and coming here to pray, is the first time, and. Um, Centuries, maybe. Well, this is the point. You know, this is like this is thousands of years that our people would have actually came to Zion. You follow me, and have actually have been keeping the holy days in Zion. Mm -hmm. You see, and because we had lost track of the holy days. You see, mm -hmm. our people would see. See, we're commanded to come to the. See, most people, most of our people, have gotten to the frame of mind where the holy days became holidays. Mm -hmm. You see, where it became like Thanksgiving, you see, but, but the holy days are supposed to be days of pilgrimage. You see, so the whole concept of that is that we're calling our people now up to Zion. This is a letter here to the children throughout the daughters of Babylon. So the letter you just saw me at first was to our brothers in the land. It says here, to the remnants, to the remnants of the house of Judah on the sea coast. This is our brothers in Ascalon. And then his, this here says, huh, to our people in Amman. You know, and um, among uh, this is in Jordan. You see, so this is all. Uh, this is our people here throughout throughout uh, uh, Egypt. So we call we we send letters to all of the, the Kohanim. So at this point now, for the first time in history, as you keep pointing out on this blood moon, we actually for the first time got a response. You see, to the degree where people are now sending uh, money up to purchase lambs and to preparation for Passover on the tenth day. You see, this is the, the facility that you see us sitting in right now. When the blood moons occur, we're going to be sitting here, you know, before the house of Yahweh, keeping the holy days. You see, so, but let's, let's, get, let's get back into what's the significance of this. I showed you here, this is an actual map here, the actual, uh, when I was, uh, the, the walls 
of, of, uh, of, uh, of the surrounding the place in which I'm going to try to attempt to show you here. And, and, and when I became the watchman here, the scripture says, and this is the whole reason why people keep hearing me say over and over again to come here to praise the name of the only name of, of the Most High that has been found anywhere in the land of Israel. The Most High said that I will place watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, that shall not give peace. You know what I'm saying? That shall not stop, you know, that shall not give their peace. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and, and, until thy kingdom is come. So this is what's happening right here. So these are the walls, and me and my family, we would go and we would actually have actually prayed on these walls, you know, for the return of our people. So what you see me doing now and continuously doing now is calling our people up in order that we can get this curse off of us. Well, they're coming. Now, w let's go ahead on and uh, anything significant you want to say, say it now because I would, what I want to do now is go outside and show the people the actual, uh, the actual place. Where okay, well, at. we have the evil shepherds of Israel here that's trying to prevent our people from coming up. And one Pacific brother here in the land, uh, they put out a video talking about the maps, you see. And these are actual maps here of the Holy Land. So they have maps that they make up that you can put in the Bible and they can put on whatever name they want to put on. But the scripture says Jerusalem here is surrounded by mountains. You see, in Jerusalem here, one of the things that led us here also, what, using the maps, uh, was the, in the history of the maps. And you can see this here, this map says, right here it says 1532. And this map here is one of the actual maps that came that that came from the from from the, the it was one of the first maps that was made. It says here, uh, uh, the author of the first atlas of the Holy Land. You see, so this came out of a out of a book. Bring it just a little closer. Of the please. first atlas of the Holy. This was the first map that they actually physically made of the Holy Land. You see, so when okay, brothers are I'm looking at, to, I'm trying to get it in focus here. Just just one moment. Let me. You just lay it down here. Right. Everybody just bear with me. Would love for you to see this for yourselves. Well, they can go to my Facebook page. So I have this on my Facebook page where you can actually study it and you can actually see it and you can actually understand the history of what's happening here. Okay. You see. So okay. this is so this is the map. This is a map here of this area. Tell her why as we was driving up here, you saw me pointing out these mountains. Mm -hmm. And this is Zion here in the side of the north. This is where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. You see, and I was talking to you about Masada. This is the area that we walk from, from Zion over to Jericho here, which is the area of Masada here. And you can see, you, you can see how it's listed here. It's, it's, it's like a big hill here. And to here you will also see, and but then when you, but see, but see, understand this now, you see here where it actually talks about En Gedi. You see En Gedi here, mm -hmm. and then you'll see Shep Exor. You see that. Now, see, the interesting thing about here is that it has, it has, it has, the, you, it has the back road. It's showing you the back road from Zion to Masada. You okay. see. And see, so only that road, and then you have En Gedi. Okay. You see, so now you're in the land, and then you have Shep Exor. So now what's happening here now, so what we're calling in Bokek is actually in Gedi. Did you understand what I just said? Yes, well, that, they're very, very close. I know that. Well, and that's down at the sea. Listen to me we're very carefully. About when, you, when you drive down there, you will see, the first thing you will see when you come in this direction, you will see Masada. Then you will see in Bokek. You see. And then you'll see Zor. But this map here is showing you that Masada, which is the fortress, which is actually, which is actually, uh, 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 which is, which is, which is actually Jericho, is actually, is, is actually linked to or connected to or right next to Elia Capitis. Now, then what's the significance of Elia Capitis or Benjamin, the land of Benjamin? The significance of that, and this is where this whole deceit comes in. There, and let let me try to get you to understand exactly how this whole deceit started and where the deceit came in. At it says here, the Jews. The Jews captured Jerusalem in 132 out of the out out of the Roman Hadrian, but the Roman Hadrian, Emperor Hadrian drove them out three years later. He tried to end, this is the key, this is the key. He tried to end all, all Jewish hope of regaining Jerusalem. He renamed the city Eliyah. Stop moving it, Hoshua. Oh, I, I didn't know you was trying to follow. 
<laughs> he renamed the city Ai Capitus mm -hmm. and built the yeah. You know, so, so he took the city, and so right, right now you see the first map of this area, and this area all being called Ai Capitus. Now let's look at the um, a map here of the area where they called Jerusalem. Then this map took place here where they was calling this area Jerusalem. This is map here. It's in 300. This is when Constantine came up. So this is a map of Jerusalem, which is the Jerusalem of the Amorites, and this is a map of Area Capitis. Okay. You see, which we call, which 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 here documents say that this was the the, the, the actual name of Mount Zion. But let me continue first before we before we end up that here. He said so his whole attempt. So he's so bad. So so he wanted uh, Hadrian. He said and uh, he built the temple. And then it said, and Hadrian, Hadrian, Hadrian even prohibited Jews from visiting or, or, or living in Jerusalem. But the city's importance and the significance of the importance did not inspire. The holy, the holy writings of the Jews, and it says that, and, uh, okay, and, and that he attempted to uh, end all Jewish hopes of finding, ever finding Jerusalem again by changing its name. You see, so he... He changed the name of the city, and then Constantine, two years later, came to Amorite Jerusalem and renamed that area Jerusalem, and they created all of these different maps centered around that being Jerusalem. But this is the actual map, you follow me, mm -hmm. of, of, of this area. And then when you, and, and, and let me show you something, and I just want to make this, I want to make this comparison. This, is, this here, and let me show you very clearly. This here is the map today, you see. Now we have, like I told you, me and my sons, we walked, we walked from here, you see, and this is, the, this is, this is what they call in Bokek, you see. So, so now here, and this is what they call Masada, you see right here. Mm -hmm. You see, so what's happening here, so when you look at this map here, you have Jerusalem being surrounded by mountains, and you have a road coming up out of here down to Masada, which is the same of what we have on the first map that was written in this area. You see here? And you see here. So then what happens now is that so here we have, and what, so what they call Embokek here, they added it on this map it was called Engedi. And here you have Zor, you see. So we have one, two, three cities on this map, you see. One, Two, three. One, two, three. And then that back road that leads right up, right up to Tel Aviv, which is this, which is surrounded by mountains, is right here next to the actual Mount Zion. Well, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do an actual separate class on that so that people can see even better. Yeah, but let me continue with this here. So now where we're at right now, we're here at this gate, and this is the fortress that we're looking at right now. This here is the first wall that you're gonna see when we come out. This is the second wall, and this is the third wall that surrounded the area that we call Arad today. Mm -hmm. And this was the temple, you see. So what's happening now, is this is, so, so all of this here, Josephus had put together, the city of David. So, so the point I'm trying to say is that is that is that there are brothers in the land, false evil shepherds, that's trying to keep people still from coming here, and they and they and they and and and, and, and they came out with certain information. And I just want to challenge them right now, and I want to put forth this challenge. They made the statement, and I think it's a very beautiful statement. They said, and, it, and it's in the scriptures clear. It says that there's a scripture where Abraham came to sacrifice Isaac, and there was a three-day journey from Bethsheba from Bathsheba to the place in which Abraham came to sacrifice Isaac, which was in Mount Moriah. Now, Mount Moriah is where the temple was built. You follow me? So I challenged these brothers publicly because I've already did it. <laughs> you know and I got donkeys and horses to prove it because I went to the old to travel from Bathsheba, or we, I would travel from Bathsheba, the ancient Bathsheba, and they travel from that Bathsheba, and I would make it here to this section in those three days where they will still not make it to the area that they call in Jerusalem in those three days, traveling by a, a horse and a donkey, or traveling by a donkey, which is what Abraham took. You see, so when you start talking about driving from here to Bethsheba and how it costs just an hour or 45 minutes, but if you start talking about walking from here to Bethsheba, it's gonna take you exactly three days. 
you see. Okay. So this, so this is that's another verification. You follow me to the brothers that's trying to just keep people from coming here or even investigating the place because they continue to follow what the what the, what the, they continue to be the tail, not the head. They continue to believe in the maps that they read out of the Bible rather than the ancient historical maps. Okay, so so if you like you said, so at, at this point I have a lot of information you see here, but these are these are these are the real simple things that we want to show you here. That, that when you see this here, this is supposed to be the temple. Let's talk about the temple. What you're seeing here right now is not the temple. This is Mount Zion. The actual, the ark or the chest was taken from here or from the actual Mount Zion to the temple that Solomon built on Mount Moriah. So what we're trying to do now, we're trying to say, we're trying, we're trying to say to the brothers or to the people to come to Mount Zion because the scriptures in the Amos said that we that the Most High will raise the tabernacle of David that fell, which was on Mount Zion. You see, so those, that's the significance of where we headed and what we're trying to do and calling the people here to pray in order to get this curse off of us. Now, there are some brothers, again, they wanted to say that that's Mount Zion. You see, well, then we, we, we again, we challenged them to walk there in three days from Bethsheba. And then when you get there, and however many days it's going to take, and I guarantee you it won't be three, <laughs> then... Keep the Passover and go up to the or to the mount and keep the Passover there. You follow and sprinkle the, uh, the blood on the altar according to the law. It's not there, but here you have the altar. Here you have the sanctuary. Here you have the the only artifact where it's been listed that the name of Yahweh has been found. And the scripture tells us a conclusion. It tells us to turn unto the place where the name of Yahweh, the Most High's name, has been found. And the only place in the land of Israel that I've shown you here that that name has been found is the place they call Tel Aviv. Thank you so much. Now we're going to go and try to see a little bit of that area before we leave. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Thank you, sister. Okay. What are we looking at? Okay, what we're looking at right now, Malia, we're looking at one of these pictures that they have in the Bible maps that all of these people have of actual Jews. You okay. follow me? Of Jews and okay. This is the lower city here, and this is the upper city. You follow me? You can see the fort on the upper city. That's supposed to be Zion. You follow me? And you got the walls here, and this is supposed to be the Eastern Gate. And as you go around these walls here, and this is supposed to be the city, and this is the government's, governor's house here. Mm -hmm. So now what's happening here, we're going to use this image here to compare with what you're looking at right here. You see, but now I see that now what's, this is the actual what you're looking at. This is what somebody drew up based upon what the, the Bible says and how they saw it in their mind, an artist, how he saw it in their mind, how it looked. You okay. follow? And this is the actual here. Mm -hmm. You see? So now here you have the fort. You mm -hmm. see? And then here you have the fort. You see? And you have the fort that's standing on. Let's bring it up a little bit closer here on my pad here. Huh? You see, we have the fort here. Mm -hmm. You see, and it's, it's on high on a higher hill. You see that? Now that's supposed to be Zion. Just like we're looking at here, that's supposed to be Zion. Now here you have the curving of the walls. Right here, the walls is broken here. You see, it's, it's been curved. It, it was connecting there, and it curved down and came to here. Now this here, we're going to be walking through the east, eastern gate right there. So you see here, this is the eastern gate here that we're going to actually be walking to. You see. I don't know how well this is showing up, but we're doing the best we can. Exactly. So what's happening right now is that, see, this is the eastern gate here. Which, yeah, we're showing it from the pad. And unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't have this printed out. But the point is, is that, so this is all supposed to be the old city and the walls. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to walk to the walls. And we're going to point out each individual gate in comparison to what they're saying here, the actual Jerusalem supposed to look like. You know, uh, uh, that, I did, that I had nothing to do with. You see that fort there? That same fort, now let's step outside now. That same fort is still there today. You see, and the walls you have here, let's keep walking. The walls that you have here are the actual walls. You see, now when you go to the place they call Jerusalem, there is no wall there that goes back to the time of David and Solomon. Did you hear me? I'm sorry. There's no wall there that goes back to the time of David and Solomon. Even the Wailing Wall is the wall of, of, of hell, the Edomite. The Edomite. <laughs> you okay. know, that controls the land. You follow me? Mm -hmm. These walls here are the actual walls 
that our forefathers built. You see, and that fort up there is the actual walls with the Kodesh Shekoh, with the Holy of Holies in it, the Tabernacle of David, that David came to conquer. You okay. See? So that what we're going to do real quickly, so now this is a diagram here, and we took this diagram, which is the actual diagram, and we put in it, according to the scriptures, the walls of Jerusalem, with the, the identifying the valleys on each side, and it fit. And we use the distance. Now, this is very interesting here. At 2 Kings, at 2 Kings 4 and 13, it talks about on this side here, the distance in the break of the wall from the corner wall. Mm -hmm. You see. And so when we measured that distance here, it came out the same as the same distance is broken there today. You see. So, okay, so say that in simple terms so okay. that all of us that, that are not archaeologic uh, archaeologists Inclined. will understand. Okay, okay, uh okay, the, the there there is uh, in the scripture in second Kings saying that a wall that this wall was broken here. And it was broken from this point to this point. Uh-huh. You see. That wall that's broken there is the same distance according to the scripture that was broken here in second kings you see so this is so this, we're showing you from here to here we are back we have uh finished the filming as far as Telerod is concerned and uh, we were interrupted at the last part where they were showing the walls mm -hmm. but um Hoshua is going to give you a little brief um, summary on that, that whole thing about the walls. Mm -hmm. um, now, um, he can do that first, and then I'm going to just summarize the whole video in itself. So, Hoshua, what did you want to say about the walls? Well, the, the, the point is that most people, what they don't understand here when it comes down to the walls, is that Zion here is the actual, you see, the square we saw at the top. That's the actual city of David. In the lower city, those walls basically were the walls that was connected to Zion, which was the second walls. So then you had the third walls, you see. So what's happening now is that what most people don't understand is that Zion here, uh, when we refer to the second temple, is not the temple. It's the tabernacle of David, you see. So when we start talking about this, so there's a difference when we're talking about the temple and the tabernacle. You see, so this is the main issue that we have to understand that when we're calling people back to Zion, we're calling people back to the tabernacle of David and not the temple of Solomon. The temple of Solomon, according to the scriptures, not one stone will be left upon another. You see, but the tabernacle of David, that is the thing that we that will be rebuilt. And, uh, and, 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 and here you see a diagram here of how the Jewish people are planning on rebuilding the tabernacle of David in the form of, you can see the two metals or the two towers that you saw there at Zion that everybody that you can see when you first always come up. This is the complex that we just looked at. It's a square complex. And what's going to happen is going to be extended into this form in that outer court. And here you have what is called the third temple. And it's going to be on Mount Zion. And the scripture says the most high will reign from Zion forever. And this is how I want to conclude. The most high says here at the Isaiah 60, uh, 62 and, uh, and 6. It says, I have, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor, or, nor night. Yea, that make mention of the Lord of Yahweh, keep not silent, and give him no rest until he has established until he has, until he established until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So this is what we this is what we're doing here at this stage and point in time. We believe that when that moon comes, our people are going to be there for the first time in thousands of years on the walls. And this is the significance of me and my family, the Maori family, being on the walls, praying 
and not giving no one any rest. And once we all come before the walls of Zion and pray, we will give the Most High no rest until he has made Zion and his people a praise in earth. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I would just like to thank my esteemed uh, guest or participant or partner, friend, for all of the valuable information that you have imparted and shared with us today. Um, this is information that you will not get anyplace else. So um, please, by all means, share it, digest it, do your own research. But above all, know that the word will come from and out of the mouth of Zion. Okay? So with that, I just want to say thank you for watching until the end. Love you all so much. Thanks again. And peace out until next time.